Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you so much for joining us. Time in the Word is time well spent. Yes. And so we are so grateful to have this time in the Word with you and purpose to join your faith to what you hear. That means we're going to be doers. We're not just going to say, oh, I like that sermon or that's good. We're going to be doers of the word that we hear. Amen. So we've been ministering on the subject of authority and dominion that belongs to us in Christ. We've been taking several episodes to teach on it. So if you missed the previous ones, go back and watch those because they'll be a help to you. But Psalm chapter 8 in verse 4, let's start reading there. We've been using this as our golden text. It reads, For what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. And the Hebrew word there is not for angels. It's Elohim, which, is, which means God. So it should read, God's made man a little lower than himself. Amen. And God has crowned man with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the work of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. We're, we're focusing on this phrase that God made man to have dominion. Yes. God made man to have dominion. That means God made man to dominate the circumstances of life, not be dominated by the circumstances of life. Circumstances are going to come. We can't stop them from coming. But we, have, we are to arrive at a place where they don't dominate us. Amen. And that, can't, that place can be arrived at and lived in. Amen. How does that come? As we know what the Word says and we put it into place. Amen. Um, what we also need to see is that um, our dominion, we have to be skill, skillful in it. Yes. It's not enough that we have it. Right. We have to know how to exercise it skillfully. Yes. And not only that, part of that skill is recognizing when something is challenging you. Some people have lived with certain circumstances and certain ways of thinking for so long that they don't even recognize that it's against the Word. You know, I've pastored for 25 years. I've been able to see people's lives over periods of time. And it's just common to every person is there are things and ways of living that we were raised in, ways of thinking that we were raised in. And um, those ways can become normal to us to where we don't even... We don't even examine them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But once the word comes in, we need, to, we need to start taking note and saying, wait a minute, what I have, what I have allowed as a way of life, is it in line with the word? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So part of being skillful in, re- in exercising our authority and dominion is recognizing what calls for yeah. our authority and dominion. Yeah. Because sometimes, as I said, people have lived and operated sometimes in such a, a flow of fear, yes. a flow of worry, that they don't even recognize that that has become their way of life. And so they don't even use their, your, their authority and dominion. Well, uh, the, first, the first key to exercising our dominion is recognize what calls for our dominion. Yes. Amen. 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 Run those things out yes. by exercising your authority and dominion, the dominion of the word, yes, sir. your dominion in Christ. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Over those things. Um, I started in a previous episode talking about this. And I just want to, I want to camp on it a little bit longer. And, and I was talking about someone that, that I was acquainted with um, that ended up in the last seasons of their life, they, they, they struggled physically and they suffered somewhat physically. 
asked before they went home to be with the Lord. And uh, they were Christians. They loved the Lord, but they didn't have the always the, the knowledge that, that we're growing into. Yes. And uh, they walked in all the light they had. Yes. But at, the, at this time when they were really struggling toward the end of their life, they would pray, oh God, heal me. Oh God, do something, you know, and they were waiting for God to do something because they did not yet have the light that God had already done it. It was on their end of receiving what God has already done instead of trying to get God to do something that he's already accomplished and that he's already provided for us because they didn't have this side the side of receiving wasn't part of their understanding. They didn't have light of that. They just kept working on God's side. God do something, God do something, God do something. Therefore, it made them ineffective in receiving. Yes, yes. You see. And we've all been that way at times. We had to catch ourselves. Are we waiting for God to do something or is it on our end of receiving something? Um, if we think about it this way, um, most of us, have cell phones, you know, a mobile or some kind of device, electronic device that calls for a signal for it to work, a Wi-Fi signal or a signal from your carrier. You know, your phone has a company that carries that, you know, that it's your provider, so to speak. You have to, if you have a cell phone, but if you go to a location that has no signal, that your phone cannot receive, it's outside of the scope of that signal that provider car that carrier provides for you. Even though you still have your phone, the phone won't work. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. Um, your inheritance in Christ belongs to you, but we have to stay on receiving ground. Now. You know, years ago when I was raised, long, long ago, and I was a baby. Let me just say, I, I, it wasn't like five years ago. It, it, I was a baby. I was, and, and it didn't happen too terribly long. Maybe it stopped when I was about maybe eight or nine. But in the, in, in the town, the area we were raised in, we had three channels. Remember that on TV? Three channels. And you had an antenna on the top of your house. How that antenna was turned determined what you got to watch, <laughs> right? And it took, it, back then it took like three people to turn to, to change the channel. One changing the antenna, one at the door calling, and the one at the TV saying, nope, turn it, nope, nope, oh, go back, you know, go. remember that? So it like took three people to turn to change the channel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do remember those days, but as I said, they were long. Yeah, I was young, 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 young. <laughs> and so, um, and so, even though we still had our television, there were times we couldn't view it. If there was a storm on, forget the forget the signal. Forget the antenna was not the antenna had too much interference. Too much interference. Well, it's the same way that it, we didn't call the television station and say, you need to fix your station. We had to fix the antenna, which was our receiver at our home. This is what many people are trying to do. They're trying to get God to send something when he's the station that has already sent the signal. It's about is our antenna in place and receiving the signal. So if something's not working, adjust something yeah. on our end. Something has to be adjusted for us to receive if we've not been receiving what already belongs to us and what has already been provided by the sender, yes. Amen. by God. Amen. So I was, now in thinking of that, because this is, this is one of the things that with this person I was telling you about, this acquaintance of mine, um, they weren't receiving. They wanted to receive, but they were working on God's end, trying to get him to give it. And it wasn't on God's end. It was on their end of receiving. They did not know how to adjust their faith, adjust their words, adjust their thinking to come in line with the word. Therefore, the receiving was faulty. God helped them as much as he could. 
but he, they could not receive fully all God had for them and wanted for them because on their end. And in talking to God about this and praying about this, because I want to, I, when, I, when I see situations of other people, I want to learn something so that I can better know how to live it, but also know how to help others with right. it. Yes. Yes. Amen. So in, in seeing their situation, I just asked God. It didn't, make my, it, it didn't cause me to waver in faith. I just said, God, how can I better help someone? How can I better teach them so they don't struggle the way that person yes. struggled? Yes. Mm-hmm. And God said this to me. He said, there must be a consistent exercise of authority and dominion as a lifestyle. When God started talking to me about their situation, he brought up their their dominion. Uh They weren't exercising their dominion. They didn't know about their dominion. They didn't know how to exercise it. So at the last of their life, they're trying to get God as a last ditch effort, do something, do something, do something. When it wasn't on God doing something, it was up to their dominion. It was up to their authority to be exercised by faith. But because they didn't, they had not really, uh, they had not spent their Christian life um, exercising dominion fully. They did in, in part, but not fully. They didn't understand the, the authority and dominion they had regarding their body, regarding sickness that would come. They didn't understand that. And God said to me, there must be a consistent exercise, a consistent exercise of authority and dominion as a lifestyle to move into and bear fruit of the highest flow. Of authority. See, we can be in a we can be in in lesser flows yes. to where we receive a measure yes. of what God has for us, a measure of God's blessing. But then we can also be in a place where we're we're receiving all He's provided, and that's what that's that's what we're pressing toward. That skill that we're living the highest flow every day. That doesn't mean circumstances leave us alone. It means that we're not, we're not, we're not swayed by them. Right. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, if I say it to you this way, because God used this phrase, um, letting me know they, they were suffering because there was a lack of consistency right. of the exercise of their authority and dominion. Um, they waited till things were so far advanced. Could their authority work? Yes, but it's easier at the onset. The earlier you see something getting out of place, the quicker you address that, the easier it is to get it dealt with. And if we have put up with something for a long period of time, your faith will still work and your authority still work, but it will take time to push that back yes. because yes. it's been used, yes. the devil and his operation has been used to having sway and having a place. Yes. 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 And it doesn't want to, the devil doesn't want to give up any place that you're taking back out of, yeah. from him. Remember what it says in Ephesians 4 verse 27, Paul wrote and he said, neither give place to the devil. Yes. Now, we see this, the devil cannot take a place in us, but we can give him a place. Not exercising our dominion and authority when he shows up to oppose us gives him a place. Now, if we gave the devil a place, we can take back the place we gave him. Amen. Amen. Um, so the, the, the quicker we are to bring our dominion and authority into play, the quicker we can get the door closed to something that's trying to oppose us. But like I said, if we've left it in, if we've left things going for an extended period of time, we can still, our authority will still work, but we will have to, it may take a, a, a bit of time. And let me, let me put it to you this way. It's called momentum. Yes. Momentum. Yes. That as we release our faith every day, that faith, that faith starts moving and it gains momentum by everyday consistency. That 
there's a, there's a momentum to that. Yes. And therefore, the next day you get up and release faith, it's easy because faith is already moving. Faith is already moving in that direction. Now, to get something going might take some extra push. You know what I'm talking about, just naturally speaking. If a car, is, if, if a car battery won't come on, a car is stalled, I don't know if people do it in this, this today, but we used to do it all the time growing up. Give me a push. Yeah. Give me a push. And it took more effort at that initial push, but once there was momentum going, it was easier. You just kind of had to keep your hand on it and just keep, just keep going, and it, it was easier. It was easier. It's the same thing with faith. If, if we will express, feed our faith every day, release our faith every day, a momentum starts. Yeah. But if, you're, if, if people are in a crisis and there's no momentum of faith going, it, it's going to take a little bit of paying attention. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's going to take some, some wholeheartedness, all in, yeah. to get a different flow operating in their yeah, life, right. the flow of faith. Right. Um, now, if... if Sickness has, has been in someone's life for a while. It gains a momentum. Anything the devil opposes, he's trying to gain momentum. So it, it, you'll have to apply your faith and get that momentum stopped and then get back everything. Now, it doesn't have to take that long to get it back. Um, because... There's miracle power. <laughs> Amen. God's power is great and it can restore things. Remember what the word tells us. It commands. We're commanded in the New Testament where uh, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now see, they've been sick. Sickness has had a momentum in their life. Lay hands on them and you'll stop the momentum of that. But now, now they, have, they do the recovery process. Now that recovery can happen quickly quickly or it can happen longer over time. But that word recover gives us the idea of a passing of time. That there's time sometimes involved, whether it's a short amount of time or a longer amount of time. Whatever, just I'm recovering. You believe that. And as you believe that, what happens, the ground the devil gained, he lost it. He loses it as you keep applying your faith and you keep pushing that back off the ground of your life. Does that make sense yes. to you? Yes. So, but if someone has no momentum mm -hmm. and then they're in a crisis and they're trying to, they're trying to receive, they're, well, they're wanting to receive something, but they're trying to get God to give it. They're, they, ha, they don't have the right momentum in place. They're not thinking right. They're, they're, they're not using their faith to receive. They're using their, well, they're trying to get it on God's side. Right. When it's really on their side, their faith has to come into play. Right. Amen. Um, momentum matters. Yes. Momentum matters. Um, I've used this illustration before that if in, in an old Western movie, you would see this. You know, these little towns that would be on the, on the plains, you know. And um, um, if there was a fire or if there was a crime or they needed to go capture a bad guy, the outlaw, mm -hmm. they would call the townspeople together and they did that by ringing a bell. Yeah. Remember, they would have a, the, the school bell or the church bell and somebody would hang on that rope and they would hang on that rope and it would be the sign, everybody in town come, there's an emergency. Yeah. Well, once that bell rang and everyone was notified, notified whoever was hanging on that bell the rope of that bell would let go of it. But the bell didn't immediately stop. The, it kept ringing for a time. Why? Momentum. And, but if once they were off that rope, if they'd stay off the rope, that bell would die down and it would go silent at one point. It's the same thing with, with when you use your authority. It... Satan, it says, submit, submit to God, resist the devil, and right. he will flee. Right. He gets off the rope. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. You yeah. use your okay. faith, it gets yeah. him off the rope. Yeah. Uh -huh. But what happens is there's a momentum of symptoms sometimes, right. a momentum right. of yes. conditions, yes. a momentum of circumstances. 
you stay off, you keep the devil off that rope because he wants the rope back. Yes, he, yes. Does. he wants yes. to get back on there. Yes. But now authority has shown up. You keep exercising your authority and it pushes him back further away from that rope to where he can't get back on that oh, rope again. Yes. Does that make sense to you? So don't be concerned that your authority and dominion didn't work just because everything didn't stop instantly. If you will just keep exercising your faith and dominion, it, 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 uh, if I could say this, safeguards your life from the, the enemy returning and getting back on that situation and causing problems. So just keep using your faith. And this is what God said. There must be a consistent exercise yes. of authority and dominion as a lifestyle. Yes. If it's not been your lifestyle, you can start making it your lifestyle today. Yes. Don't think you have to just go on accepting defeat because you haven't had a lifestyle of consistency with this, right. exercising your dominion. You can, you can start that lifestyle. Today's the first day of that lifestyle. Yes. Do it. Amen. Amen. And from Amen. here on out, right. we yeah. pay attention. We're yes. vigilant. We're watchful. Yes. We exercise our authority because that's our part. And when we exercise our authority, God will do his part of backing us up with his that's power. Right. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. So it does matter that we're consistent because of the momentum oh. that causes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Um, Dad Hagen told a story and it's so important because it, it really depicts this very clearly. And that is years ago, he was called to the hospital bed of a man who was 39 years old. He was in a coma and um, the family had called for Brother Hagen to come and minister to this young man. Brother Hagen went into the hospital room, laid his hand on him to pray. And when he did, God spoke to him and God said, a spiritual law has been set in motion. Look at that word, set in motion. What's that mean? Momentum. A spiritual law has been set in motion that cannot be reversed, cannot be reversed at this time. So it would be better to just dismiss his spirit and let him come on home and be with me. Now, we can talk about several things in that. Um, a spiritual law has been set in motion. Now, God's not referring to Brother Hagen. Brother Hagen didn't set something in motion over this life. What's that mean? The man in a coma set something in motion. And it's a spiritual law he set in motion. When, when Brother Hagen went out later out of the room and talked to the family members, one of the family members said, because Brother Hagen told them, what God said to him. One of the family members said, Brother Hagen, when we were, he said, when he was 19 years old and I was about 17, we were out fishing one day and we, you know, were horsing around, you know, as brothers having a good time. But he said the conversation turned serious at one point and said, my brother, referring to the one on the, on the, on the hospital bed, made this statement. He said, I'll never live to see the age 40. And they said, and he said that regularly throughout his life. Now see, now it made sense to Brother Hagen. A spiritual law has been set in motion. What was the motion? What set it in motion? His words. He spoke words. And those words, he didn't just speak them once. He fueled it. He gave it momentum by speaking it more than once. Know this. The devil will suggest thoughts to you, trying to get you to say them. If you set it in motion, you have to stop it. How do you stop? If you've said wrong things, if you've said, I never have enough money, you're setting a spiritual law in motion. If anybody gets sick, it's going to be me that gets sick. You're setting a spiritual law in motion. You say, "Uh uh-oh, Pastor Nancy, I recognize I've done that. You can change that. You can change it. How do you change it? Speak words that set the, the law of faith in motion. That's right. Amen. You say, <clears throat> I'll live out my life. I'm, I, I don't ever get sick. Right. I'm the healed. I don't ever get sick. And I always have enough money. Yeah. See, right. you, just, you just say what you want instead of saying what is 
suggested to you in thought life. See, the devil no doubt suggested that to that man. He didn't recognize it because when the devil says something, it can seem so real. But I don't care how real it seems. If it's not in line with the word, don't say it. (laughs) Now, God said to Brother Hagin, a spiritual law has been set in motion by that man. And he said, it cannot be reversed at this time. Why could it not be reversed? Yeah. He's in a coma. Yeah. That's right. uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and, and then Brother Hagen went on on a different time of telling this. He said, you could have said, well, then why can't God bring him out of the coma so he can speak and reverse it? Yes. Because you can't change a life of momentum with one saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, amen. You can't just say it once and reverse a momentum of a whole life. Yeah. You have to have, you have to put in place a lifestyle now of saying the different direction to stop the momentum of that. And that's why God said to him, a spiritual law has been set in motion that cannot be changed, at, that cannot be reversed at this time. Yes. Now, then God said, it's better to release his spirit and let him come on home and be with me. Why? It's better to go home and be with the Lord than to lay in a body and not and be like a held a prisoner right. in a body and him never going to come out of it. Right. See, that's God says it's just better to release him. Right. There are some things, listen, for her, for the believer, death is never loss. Right. Amen. Death is never defeat. Yes. Amen. Yeah. So we see this momentum matters. Yes. So when God said to me, there must be a consistent exercise of authority and dominion as a lifestyle. Yes. Pay attention to your words. Right. And if you're, if you've said words that are not what you want, mm-hmm. reverse them. You can revert. You can reverse them. How you do it. Just re- say words that reverse it. Speak the word of God and make it a lifestyle of saying the right thing. And it will change the direction of the whole course of the arenas of life. Amen. Amen. My goodness, there's a, there's a lot to learn in it. So it's so wonderful to get to learn it. Amen. Well, we don't want you to miss the upcoming episodes because we're going to keep going this direction and we all need it. I said, we all need this teaching of the word and uh, go back and watch previous ones along this subject if you have not watched the previous ones. But until we see you next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In the book, Victory Over Grief and Sorrow, Nancy Dufresne shares from firsthand experience how even death is no match for the mighty force of peace that is available to every believer. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 4th through the 6th. For more information, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. Every one of us have a job to do in the body of Christ. It's a new day of stepping into places in the spirit that will bring us into a greater flow. They come for anything else but to help people. A fresh momentum that hits a stride. What is the job of the body of Christ? It's to set people free, get people healed, get people saved. Can you say amen? Hitting a stride in the spirit realm in healing and in gifts of healings.
This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, President of Dufresne Ministries. I want to extend an invitation to you to become a partner with Dufresne Ministries today. The vision of Dufresne Ministries is to move with the Word and the Spirit as we bring the message of faith and God's healing power to this generation. Partnership is a two-way street. We commit to bring the uncompromised Word of God to you, and you can, by faith, become a partaker of the grace upon this ministry. Then our partners bring their prayer and support. If you receive from this ministry and have been blessed by it, please pray about becoming a partner today. God bless you. Some of the arms of the ministry that you'll support include a traveling ministry with crusades and conferences held nationwide and abroad, the printing and publishing of books, CDs, and DVDs to get this message out, Fresh Oil Fellowship, a ministerial organization for the encouragement of five-fold ministers who desire to flow with the Word and the Spirit, TV and other media broadcast that reach various parts of the world. Our Jesus the Healer television broadcast is currently on six different networks, potentially reaching 329 million households. Benefits you receive from partnership include a 20% discount on all Dufresne Ministries products, a monthly partner letter from Nancy Dufresne, consistent ministry updates and communication, and the prayer of agreement with our partners. Be a part in carrying out the vision. Pray about becoming a legacy partner today. For more information, go to our website at defrainministries.org.